Open Index Protocol gets 60 seconds to remind you or say something they haven't shared yet. And then we'll go for crowd and judges' questions. So if you have a question as they start to talk, please just step up to the mic and we'll call on you in order. Judges, you'll also fill in the gaps. It's, all your, it's on you guys. Once you start, Vin will start the clock. Open Index Protocol <clears throat> creates a, it's a specification that creates an index for the web. And when we say that to a lot of people, they look at us quizzically like, what is an index? Why does the web need an index? So I want to ask something. Can anyone think of their favorite public space on the web? Just throw them out if you can think of any. Okay, you're Reddit. Reddit, good example. Is it really a public space? All of Reddit's application and servers are controlled by the Reddit Corporation. So is that a public space? It might feel like it, YouTube might feel like it, but it's not. It's a proprietary space run by a proprietary company. And we like to put a lot of content into it thinking that it's a public space and that it's the same thing as if I'm outside in public and just kind of speaking about something, I should have that free speech. But the truth, if it, the truth is, if I enter a private space, what I can do is up to the owner of that space. That's absolutely, that, that's the way it is. The web right now is made up of 100% private spaces. There is no public space. This is the biggest reason why we, why we set out to build this. Make the internet free again. Okay, that should start some questions. So who's got a question in the judges panel? And if you have one, please line up at one of the crowd mics. So how long do you guys think it will take for you to index what is currently uh, publicly available information oh on there. My God. Gosh, that's a good question. There's there's so many different ra routes to do it. First, we want to kind of kickstart people publishing their own content, because yeah. the web right now is, is built by scrapers. Bots running around and following links. Now, there's okay. no reason we can't do that. So we fully intend to replicate that the same way every search engine filled their indexes. Mm -hmm. But more than that, we really want people to volunteer to put their own information in so that they can declare their own terms and what's important to them. SEO is like doing this after the fact. You put your thing up and then you add some stuff to it so a search engine can know how to index and tag your stuff. Mm -hmm. With this, as you put your content up, you describe the metadata right there. So it's, it's SEO right at the publishing step. And, but we can give you a kind of a sense of how long it takes to onboard something. So one of our mm -hmm. newest partners there, um, a completely independent news um, outlet in the Middle East, and they have four million users, and they are planning to put in their back catalog. And so we ran the numbers on this. Can you recall them off the top of your head? I think it was about a week. They've got 70 million uh, uh, records of content, and we said, now we can of course make some changes to things to allow for this, but we'd much rather uh, increase the, the the limits that are there when there's enough constant demand for that. And in the meanwhile, it just kind of backlogs a little bit, right. so it can go very fast catching up what's right. already out there. Right. Exactly. And what is the way to automate when, you, when you're publishing new content onto the web to make sure that it's indexed properly? Uh, uh, there's a couple of different things we can do. Like uh, someone that has a YouTube channel, they can actually run a little app on their own computer that will just say every time they publish to YouTube, it'll automatically right. publish to Open Index Protocol yeah. as well. You can do that with pretty much any publishing platform that exists on the web right now. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Yeah, my, my question is around uh, like encouraging developer support, like getting people on board with the ecosystem. I'm a developer myself, so I'm interested in what we you guys are doing. So yeah. um, what is your strategy for getting people to integrate your protocol in the applications that are building open source or otherwise? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, just to say off the bat, uh, I, I think that one of the decisions we made that's really, really going to benefit this, that the application layer is almost entirely web tech. So you do not need to be a blockchain developer to build an application application on top of this, you need to be a web developer. That's pretty powerful in and of itself. Yeah. Um, nope. So the other thing that I would just say is that you can sort of judge a project like ours by its developer community more than its end user community, especially at this phase of the game. And the, the overwhelming feedback we've received over and over, we were vetted extensively by Overstock, um, is that uh, developers love using it. It's really easy to use. It's really satisfying. It's um, yeah, yeah, it works really yeah. well, exactly, yeah. and that's really beneficial. Yeah. So that's what have, developers have, want. We have a great developer community of people who have had some sort of success and are coming back for more, kind of. Yeah. Question over here. Uh, what is your strategy for scalability and performance? Sorry, for what? Scalability, uh, scalability and performance. performance. Uh, part of it is just came down to our design itself. Um, like if you saw the original presentation, you saw that what we're doing is we're putting the larger piece of content, the files itself, in a distributed network like IPFS or BitTorrent. Then we just put the smallest piece of information possible. That uh, index information is metadata. It's what are my terms and how do I describe it? Like what's the author name? What's the, 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 the title of the book or whatever? That's the, small, the smallest bit of information you can is what goes into the blockchain. Uh, it's go we're going to follow a lot of the same scaling strategies that Bitcoin and or BSV and or Bitcoin Cash follow. Um, we have slightly different 
uh, demands on our blockchain, so we can actually benefit from uh, uh, a lot of things that they, they can't necessarily, and what we can actually watch, because they've got considerably larger communities so far, is we can kind of watch how that works for them. And you can actually see two distinct, we're really three distinctly different scaling strategies between BSV, between Bitcoin, and between uh, Lightning Network. So just wa And we actually also uh, uh, have had some confirmation from a bunch of people that they believe that Lightning Network is actually going to be that same concept of using smart contracts to take some content out of the chain. It's going to be a perfect solution for how we can scale some of the, the, the aspects of our project right. as well. Corey, Brant, and then if we have time, we'll uh, go to the next one. You mentioned that the, these are private spaces, right, in the mm -hmm. internet, and let's call them overlords. Why aren't you going to be the overlord, you know, the one ring kind of thing? Because the system's fully decentralized. This was really important to us. We don't want to be a central point of failure because it would put us, it would make us vulnerable to somebody coming after us to make changes to things. So because the metadata is in the blockchain, fully decentralized, yeah, transparent. You, you certify that this is, who's going to certify that this is my data? The decentralized network itself. You do, as the person who put your data into the network. And the decentralized network, kind of due to the nature of blockchains, the way that <laughs> blockchains validate transactions, the same kind of thing here, where because of the nature of it, you have control over I your data. that data, how do I know that it's really... You can actually take, if you have a, a large social media profile outside of blockchain, which is kind of where they all exist, you can actually attach that social media profile to your publishing account within OIP. So that's a good way that artists can say, hey, by the way, you can trust this. This isn't pirated. I put this out. Yeah. We call that verified publisher. It's like connecting to a third-party database. And yeah. you don't control that. Then. We do not. Absolutely not. It just yeah. creates a loop between Brent, it and the blockchain. Brent, 30 seconds. Sorry. Go. What is your thoughts on data privacy? Amazon already knows everything right. I want to Open buy. Index protocol. YouTube knows what they're going to totally. buy. Open Index Protocol doesn't touch data privacy at all because we don't touch personal data at all. When we build our application, it'll be a mix of Open Index Protocol for all the con public, public content and then things like DID for all the private data. Solid, MetaMe, those exactly. kinds of, okay. yeah. MetaMe. Good question. I think we're going to have no time on this round. Six seconds, so we'll wrap it there. One so more we, thing. Uh, make a plug-in for WordPress. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. That's up next. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Nice. All right, good. This is a big deal. All right. Can we show the crowd vote, please? Open Index Protocol has one vote. So now it's down to the judges. I'm just going to go down a line, and you're going to tell me which one you want. So who you got? Open Index. Okay, they got two votes. Who you got? Open index. Three. Open index. Four. Open index. Five. Can we give them a hand? Can we give Chain Rider a hand? Final four, Chain Rider. Open index protocol, go to the finals. Okay. Next up.